doing, buddy? Hey, pretty good, Sean. Uh, today we got what we, uh, number 23 podcast? 23, yes. Number 23. I say it every time. <clears throat> yeah, time a lot flies going when on. you're having yeah. fun. Yeah, a lot going on here. So look, at, let's just jump right into it. Keep yeah, the there, people informed. Yeah, there's a lot going on. The city's got a lot of things happening. But uh, before <clears throat> we uh, talk about some of the other things that are going on, yep. I kind of want to rehash a little bit about the murder that we just had because there was some real interesting information that I found out. Um, yeah. I found out that, um, this young man who murdered the other young man, and regardless of what kind of lifestyle and why it happened, it is a tragedy, neither the less, right? You, you got a young man who's dead and you got another man who's going back. Let me underscore that back yeah. to prison. Mm -hmm. Um, and I want to talk about that in a minute. But before we do, Timmy, I just want to remind everybody that uh, if you like our show, please subscribe to our channel. It's really simple. Just hit the subscribe button on the YouTube channel. Hit the little bell. You'll be notified of all the new podcasts. You won't have to keep texting me and saying, hey, when's the next show? Uh, you'll be automatically alerted. So uh, please subscribe to our channel. And uh, that would be great. Now, Timmy, I want to bring on a, a short little clip, and uh, I want the uh, audience to be able to hear this. So let me just bring that on for a minute, and then we'll jump right into our conversation. Sure. Yep. Let's go. Tonight, an Albany County grand jury handing up an indictment charging anti-violence activist Dante Mitchell with murder. Also, criminal possession of a weapon and reckless endangerment. The 43-year-old Mitchell is accused of causing the death of Shair Leggett on Main Street in Cohoes last week on August 11th. Leggett suffered serious injuries in the shooting and died at Albany Medical Center. Mitchell remains in the Albany County Correctional Facility. His next court date has not been scheduled yet. Mitchell spent 24 years in prison for an armed robbery he committed when he was just 17. He was released after former Governor Andrew Cuomo granted him clemency in 2021 conversation on that news piece uh this man was in prison for 24 years a violent man with an arm robbery with a gun mm -hmm. put into prison and now he walks the streets and kills another man just a few years after he's been released but the moral of the story is why was this guy released from prison he was released from prison because the most corrupt governor in america and you remember i said that a few years ago and boy did i yeah. take a beating for it but the cuomo, most corrupt yeah. governor in america andrew cuomo mm -hmm. released yeah. him and other murderers out on our streets because the man is in himself crazy this is a guy who's responsible for people getting the shit kicked out of him on the streets, crime going skyrocketing throughout the New York state. Yeah, he signed a bail reform. Okay. This guy is a monster. Mm -hmm. He is no good. He's the most corrupt governor. Nothing's ever happened to him because he's got tons of money. He's a piece of shit at the highest level, but he is directly responsible for letting this guy out of jail who kills another man in our city. So he should be real proud of himself, just like he did in the nursing homes, Timmy. Here's a guy who sits on uh, television every day during the pandemic, talking about how great he is and how great the state is. And, you know, I should be the leader of the of the free world and read my book and give me an Emmy. I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. And he's putting seniors with COVID in nursing homes and killing other old people in those nursing homes. He's directly responsible, in my opinion, and in many other people's opinion, for the death of all these people. This guy didn't give a shit about nothing. He cared about himself. And then on his way out the door, you know, he uh, does all this other crazy shit. But you know what? He never apologized for the young girls that he uh, he liked to put his hands on. Yeah, right? Yeah, man, he even he, including a female state trooper. Absolutely. Okay, he didn't normally, have a yeah, right. Right, bullying normally, people uh, like me around, did he? He wouldn't right. bully me to my face, of course, but he would bully you through the pulpit, right? Mm -hmm. The guy is a slum, scum, piece of crap who should never, ever work in public sector government or a job again. And he's directly responsible. So how ironic a guy from Cohoes is released from prison because of this clown Cuomo. And then two years later, he kills a kid in the middle of our streets. And wasn't this guy some kind of an advocate for um, 
um, nonviolence as well. So he suddenly, goes to prison. Suddenly, you know, yeah. he goes to prison and he, uh, he, you know, I guess he has an epiphany and, and, and believes in God and he wants to do some <clears throat> great work. And yeah. you know what? I would hope that would be true because I believe people deserve second and third chances yeah. in this world, right? Yeah. Everybody who's been in trouble deserves a chance. Everybody who's been in trouble but didn't get caught gets that chance, right? We're right. all sinners, man. Right. We and, all have problems. Yeah. We all do stupid shit. Right. And let me tell you something. John McDonald even told me in an email that they believe in second uh, chances for people. OK, they even have a, a guy that's that got elected in the assembly down there um, who served seven years in prison for manslaughter. Well, he should. John McDonald should kiss the ground for second chances because yeah. didn't he have an issue? Wasn't there something where two million dollars of money was taken from you know the government to fill prescriptions but yet there was no records of those things yeah and, and who let him off the hook who cuomo. let him off the hook this clown this cuomo. piece of shit governor cuomo yes. lets him off the hook mm -hmm. and what's he do he pleads in a sense guilty right because he says okay i'll pay two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in fines yeah. because you just pay two hundred and fifty thousand fines because you feel like it right mm -hmm. he like everybody else who's done something stupid deserves a second chance. Yeah. John McDonald's like, you know, you got to bow down to him around here. Yeah. He's like the great coming of Christ, mm -hmm. as sad as it is. And it was all because of this guy, this Cuomo. Cuomo got him right. off the hook. Cuomo's the guy they went to. He had money. He has money. Money loves money. Corrupt likes corrupt. And this Cuomo now should look in the mirror and say, a kid is dead because of my decisions that were really motivated by getting more votes, right? Yeah. And Old people have died because I decided to throw people back into their nursing home when they had COVID, when we knew that COVID killed the oldest of people. You know, and Sean, also, you know, that wasn't just a shooting down there in Main Street. As I told you earlier, that was a firefight. Uh, I know that there were over 24 rounds fired okay because of the casings on the ground oh yeah i I, I know an exact number but i i'm not going to release that due to protecting sources listen here's what i do know a friend of mine's house got hit once yeah and then she comes back on the internet a couple days later and said holy shit i have two bullets in my house this mm -hmm. was a guy who took a gun and sprayed it all across the street didn't give a shit about anybody and he would never have been on that street shooting up all those houses and the people and any and, and killing a kid if it wasn't for the guy on my right here who is evil in himself mm -hmm. yep. i'm telling you <laughs> this guy should rot in hell for the things that he's done and we're Forever. still feeling the effects of his decisions new york state raised the age new york state bail reform i mean What's going on in a world where we are giving criminals all of the benefit of the doubt and we're sucking the life out of all the good people? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The state of New York, the state of California, all these liberal states, they're shitholes. People are afraid to walk the streets. Mm -hmm. And it's this guy right to my right, right on this, uh, uh, on this podcast. You can see his picture. He is directly responsible for the spiraling out of control violence in the state of New York. And it hit home right here in the city of Cohoes because he didn't give a shit about the good people. He was trying to figure out how to help his buddies who make millions of dollars off bail reform and off all the mm -hmm. other laws protecting kids. And he didn't care. And then and he says, there. I got a big heart. I'm going to let these people out of jail because they shouldn't spend their lives in jail. Well, listen, that's not up to him. That's up to the citizens. That's up to the to the court system. The guy had a gun and robbed somebody. Would he have killed them? I don't know. But is he a killer? Yes, he is. Did this guy care? No, he didn't. And this that's is the, the second the second incident of uh, how bail reform affected Cohoes directly. Okay, we had a guy get stabbed in the neck up at Stewart's, who was just released earlier in the day. Twice. The, right, yeah. right, twice by the Cohoes police because they had no choice. They the, uh, due to this bail reform. Absolutely. Okay? And it, where does it it all falls back on Cuomo it and does. the state and legislature? It is. John McDonald, Neil Bruzzin, Cuomo, the whole bunch oh, of them. They're a bunch of clowns. These people are running your life. You wouldn't pick them to play gym with you. They wouldn't be on your baseball team. They wouldn't be on your basketball team. You might let them box with you because you want to whack them upside the head a few times. But they're running your lives. They're running our state. They're running it into the ground. 
yeah. they don't care. Violence is so out of control. Timmy, let me just tell you something. There's only two cases that were public that we know about, but there's right. hundreds and hundreds of kids and young adults and older adults getting in trouble every time in this city, and they just get put out uh, with no bail. We right. just had a, a guest on, Tina, right? And yeah, they Tina were talking Garrett. about all of these kids that were dealing with bullying and getting beat up and being threatened and being jumped by two, three, mm -hmm. four kids and the parents being, uh, their houses being like um, sabotaged and their cars being scratched and there's nothing nobody can do. And I told you that's bullshit. That's lazy. That's not trying. That's not looking for a solution. That's not looking for a way. Where there is a will, there is a way. We don't have that will in Cohoes. We just go along with the liberal clowns like Cuomo. Now you have another governor in Hochul. That's, uh, I give her some credit, though. You know, I don't know enough about her, but I'll give her some credit. She has made some arguments to change bail reform and raise the age. Because mm -hmm. I think even she, as a, I don't know if she has kids, but she's a woman. She understands the the, the scary uh, scenario we have in the state. I don't know her. I don't like her mm -hmm. for a lot of other reasons. But give her credit where credit is due. She has tried to make some changes. Whether those changes are going to be uh, of any significance, I, I have no idea. <clears throat> Only Something has to be done. Okay. And it's also, uh, you know, the certain age group of uh, uh, teenagers. Okay. Uh, if there, there's a window of age right there that if I think if they're under 14 or 15, the the police can't do a whole lot about it. Well, uh, and that's again, what they're telling me. Again, Timmy, they can tell you all they want. Where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. Believe me, I know because we did it. We didn't Family have this court. kind of crime right. on the city. Look, at, right. we right. had a couple murders in the city, but we didn't have street crime. We cleaned it up. Mm -hmm. You know why we cleaned it up? Because we understood that we needed to get Cohoes moving in the right direction. We needed investors. We needed to rebuild. We needed to rebrand. We need The first thing I did is I lit the flag up on City Hall to say, we are open for business. We love our veterans. And Cohoes is a place that you want to come because we're Cohoes proud. That was mm -hmm. the first thing that I did. And the second thing I did is tackle crime. Because you're not going to get investment. You're not going to bring back a downtown when it was riddled with crime, riddled with drugs, riddled with uh, bums sleeping all over the place, weeds everywhere, parks that were decayed, buildings that were falling apart. You weren't going to get people to come to Cahos. And that leads to the next story, Timmy. And that's what's happening right now. Now, we know that Cahos, congratulations. The last city, I think. A lot, maybe there's one more. Maybe Water of Elites next. But we know that Cohoes won the $10 million. And we know right. that this is a political uh, game, right? Right. In uh, an election applied, year. Uh, yeah. When I applied for the $10 million, there's all of these requirements, all these boundaries, right? You couldn't go outside of the, the business district. You have to have shovel-ready projects. We had all of it. We mm -hmm. took city money, turned it into millions of dollars. We took and uh, got projects done. We did them ourselves to show that we had some kind of vision. And unfortunately, we never won because politically we weren't connected enough. And, and secondly, politically, we weren't a big enough city to get a bigger bang for your buck, right? All the big yeah, cities right. yeah. in the capital region got the money first because, you know, they're the big cities and that's where the, you know, all the votes come out. And besides, you were mayor, so they were. And I, well, you know, but job. here's the good part, though. Even though they didn't want to give me the money because John McDonald and them didn't want me to be the guy that gets things done when they couldn't get anything done. Um, we still got millions in grants because we came in second place for uh, all yeah. the years and we end up getting probably five or six million dollars. And here was the better part of it. No strings attached compared to this thing. Cuomo made this into a mockery, right? He made it sound like the government is given $10 million. Bullshit. The government doesn't have money. The taxpayer is given $10 million. Mm -hmm. And this guy's well, playing with our money, saying, hey, if uh, we're going to make this into a game, you know, and it is an unfair game because small cities don't have as much money as big cities. Big cities are hiring consultants and all these other people to put together the packages. We're trying to do it with, uh, you know, with um, a small team of people. We got to use whiteout every time we make a mistake. We don't have, you know, millions of dollars like other big cities use to win this money. But here's the moral of the story. A couple months ago, when the city um, won this $10 million, I said to you on this podcast. Yep. That nobody 
is going to want to take any of that money and invest millions of dollars in our city. Now, hear me out, Timmy. <clears throat> this is why. This is my mindset. Mm -hmm. We took a city that was uh, in cardiac arrest, right? Or pretty damn close to it. And we took it to a different um, position and started moving it up the hill, up Mm -hmm. the hill. And all of a sudden, we started seeing investment from the government, taxpayers' money. So what they do is they take our money and then they give it back to us and they cut a ribbon and say, look how great I am. I gave you all this money. Thanks for stealing our money and then giving it back to us. And, and, and we should have pom-poms for you. But anyway, we've seen the city slowly, slowly going up and then up and up and up and up and up and up. An investor wants to see a city that was dead, that is now on the rise. And they want to get in on that rise of the city. They don't want to get into a city that's stagnant. Right, and Red Street wanna... was rising. the uh, the uh, The Canal Square was uh, coming along pretty good. Everything then, was rising. Crime everything was, was going, going pretty good. Okay, everything was going good. Okay. So now until uh, the council decides to kill the golden goose. Well, let me just get, yeah, screw the council. But anyway, anyway, let, let let's just go to where I was taking Great. this. Right, so we're going uphill. And next thing I know, Timmy, we got seventy five million dollars of private investment. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, we brought we in hundreds of thousands of dollars to go into our bank accounts that was was able to be set aside so we didn't have to raise taxes. Mm-hmm. So for the first time, we weren't a taxing and spending city. We were a city that wasn't raising taxes, collecting new revenues, putting some of it away, lowering the amount of money we relied on from our rainy day funds. No and tax everything increases. Everything was working. No tax increases, really no tax increases, not right. political zeros that get you in trouble years down the road. But right. we were handing out zeros while we were coming under budget and we we're putting money in the savings account. You have to have those three things before you can have a real zero. Mm-hmm. But more importantly, private investment was flowing into this city. I had to stop and say, whoa, I can't keep up with it all. I was excited. We went from flatline to having more people want to get involved in the uprising of Cahos that we had to step back. Here's where investors don't want to get into. This is a bad message about the future. When you go from flatline and you start going up the hill and everything looks like you're going to uh, rocket to the moon, and then just a few years later, you're starting to go back down, that's a bad investment. That's like buying a stock that you know is, is worth $10 when you buy it, and it's going to go up to 50 and then you're going to see it going down, but you pay 500 for it. Just mm-hmm. a bad investment. Investors are in the business of making money. Politicians and mayors are in the uh, the business of rebuilding cities so that you have a place to live, to be proud of. Clean streets, parks, safe streets, recreation, restaurants, and nice little neighborhoods and great schools. Well, right now, what do we have? We have crime that's going out of control. We have streets that are filthy. We have weeds growing through everything. We have businesses that close their doors. Yes, Smith's just came back, but there's a caveat to that, right? Free rent for a year. <laughs> so what right. do you got to lose? Right. Yep. So why he may prosper, if the other ones ain't prospering, there's no success. <clears throat> and they're not. And and the bottom line is people ain't, is that where I get yelled at all the time because I say ain't. Let me, let me right. rewind that. People are not going to invest millions of their own dollars into a city that's falling apart. Now that ten million dollar check, yep. <clears throat> the mayor of this city said, right, it's gonna rebuild our downtown like it wasn't already rebuilt. He walked in and he should have just sat in his chair and did nothing, shut his mouth, and he would have had the greatest city in the capital region, right? Yeah. But he said we're going to rebuild the fire site, and you can see the picture on right. the bottom. That right. it was a devastating fire. I was there. I watched it. It was, uh, it was a devastating fire. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you this: we had people lined up to come and build on that site. We were just trying to assemble all the pieces. We already had the builders. Not well, anymore. Guess what, no, guess what they have? Nothing. Because they Nothing. went out They went out for bid, Timmy, right? Yeah, they did. You know, and, and no takers. So they got $10 million. They're willing to give you know a large amount of sum <clears throat> to investors to come and invest to help yep. them offset the costs. <clears throat> and they have how many takers? 
No takers. No takers. No not bids. one person. Not one bid. Not nobody <clears throat> coming to the city that said, "Oh, we're going to uh, develop uh, that hole." Develop that thing. hole yeah. because the city's doing so great. When yeah. right around the corner, right mm. around the corner from mm. that nice burned out section, we just had a guy shooting up the neighborhood with a gun. Mm-hmm. And, right and, on and, Main and, Street. And just a couple nights ago, Timmy, a guy stabbed his girlfriend four times. And oh. every, Every day, on, every day on uh, Facebook, you're seeing people post where people are breaking into their cars, stealing their cars, beating up their kids. We are four square miles. Four. Yeah. If you cannot control and fix four square miles, how the hell do you run the state police? <clears throat> right. And keep in mind, okay, uh, uh, the incident that just happened uh, where... Um, this guy brandished a gun in Troy and crossed over into Cohoes. Um, there was a, a lot of flack going on out about the uh, Troy police that came into Cohoes to assist Cohoes, and they were brandishing all these weapons and everything. And I posted on out there that Cohoes police, well, Cohoes police enjoined with Troy during that incident. And here I am getting um, bit chastised by troglodyte Brian Bullock. <laughs> about the the uh, information not being 100 percent spot on well basically it was okay? it was spot on because uh, exactly what it was there, there was some kind of chase in troy and and the chase in troy came over to calls it yeah. doesn't matter you know timmy i've been yeah. saying this forever they want to nickel dime me, uh, yeah, they, our podcast, or uh, nickel yes. dime what's going on look at do something positive brian other than run your mouth Yeah, I mean, the bottom line is this. All communities will have crime. Never like we have now. Never like we have now because of these these laws have just allowed people to run wild. But we'll always have crime. It is how do you handle the crime? Mm -hmm. How do you address your residents when they're scared? Well, in Cajos, you tell them when they come to speak to you at a council meeting, you tell them, if you don't like it, move. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's what. And, that's and what then they a week later, told. there's another murder. I and then what Tina was there too, Timmy. Yeah, I got a phone call from a constituent the other day. I, I shouldn't say constituent. I'm not in office no more. But I got a call, a, a phone yeah. call from a person that they said, "Listen, I was sickened. I go to the council meeting, and what are they talking about? The mayor's patting everybody on the back, saying how great the city is, how safe it is. That we only had one murder. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. We shouldn't be celebrating one murder. Mm-hmm. We shouldn't be celebrating how safe we are." Until somebody hands us an award and says, you're the safest city in the United States of America. You should never rest. You should exactly. always be looking for things. I don't see cops walking. Uh, and, I don't killer see- is, and killer is concealing the amount of violence that's really uh, going on. Well, I don't even know if he's concealing it, Tim. I think he's a moron. Mm-hmm. I don't think he knows. Because yeah. you can't see it from up on Western Avenue. Okay? You got to go down right. into the gut and you got to walk around. You got to yeah. walk the beat with the cops like I did. You yeah, got to get, get in the car and drive around. You got to listen to the people. Yeah, and it's it's, it's in the school system, heavily it's everywhere. In, at the at the middle school level. Because we're okay. all we're all playing tag team with this shit liberal government that we have. Yeah, and as yeah. long as we have yeah. a government that allows the criminals to succeed and 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 the good people to fail, we are doomed. Our destiny is doomed. Yeah, right? the innocent the innocent uh, people who are trying to defend themselves are now uh, uh, the vic- uh, the victims as a result of just self defense. I mean, it's insane. It's flipped. It's upside down. The world's upside down. New York State is one of the worst places to be, it's and totally you know, upside down. It, it, it is. It's totally upside down. And there's there's a lot of reasons why it's upside down, Timmy. But the moral of the story is the main reason is guys like this with Cuomo. Uh, you know, the governor of the state of New York, as long as we continue to support the criminals, as long as we allow thousands and thousands of people to jump over our borders. You know, I used to say yeah. a long time ago before this, this is a crisis that is, is beyond a belief. But I used to say, you know, it's really important that people can't just come over the borders. You know, in the United States, you have to take all of the, you know, there's all of these diseases that we eradicated and, and we have to meet certain mm-hmm. standards. And, you know, then COVID came and all of a sudden, you know, you couldn't, you had to have a mask, you had to have a test, you have to have the, 
and we just let thousands and thousands of people jump the border. Yeah. Does anybody with a half a brain think this is anything other than, oh, we're just a compassionate country? Yeah, a compassionate country says these are the point of entries. Come in the right way. Keep everybody else out so we can uh, be safe. Because I hate to say this, but if a million people jump over the border and three people in that million are murderers, everybody else is irrelevant. Because you have right. to protect the country against those three people. And you can't just pick them out. You don't know where they are. You can't just yeah, say. If you, you try to come into this country legally, you get screened for tuberculosis and everything else. Uh, okay, criminal records, murder. Uh, yeah. And, you know, and look at. And, 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 and look at. And also McCarthy. Okay. McCarthy says, oh, these are asylum seekers. No, 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 no. No, Billy. they're not. Okay. Billy, these people are just uh, border crossers, okay? Uh, you want to have compassion for people? Come into this country legally. It's not asylum. Asylum is on a case by case basis, okay? Not not by the hundreds of thousands. Ask him to give you the definition. He has no idea what he's no, talking No, because about. his mouth wouldn't open because he wouldn't know, right? He has no There's idea. a difference between people that say they got to come to this country because their lives are in danger for some political reason, their family's in danger, you know, whatever that. Um, uh, case it's may be it's, mainly, it's, it's, uh, mainly asylum is for uh, to avoid a uh, political uh, persecution. Absolutely, that's it. Absolutely. Okay. These and there's some other coming, I'm, right. They're just coming here for jobs and stuff listen, like that. These are single men. Yeah, coming to the United States. A lot of Chinese too for a better life. It has nothing to do with a better life. Asylum seeking is not about wanting to build a better life. Mm -hmm. It's about I have to leave my country or they're going to kill me. That's what it is. And McCarthy doesn't get that. And right now what we're doing is we're letting all these people over for what? You know why, Timmy? We're letting them over so they can vote, so they can continue to build the power for these left crazy ass people. You've already seen it. I said it two years ago. I'll say it again. They're looking to get these people over. Look what we did for you. Register to vote. Vote Democrat. And keep us in power. And you know that's the case because a couple major cities, and I think New York was one of them, and I'll stand corrected, but a, a bunch of major cities were trying to pass laws that you didn't have to be an American citizen to vote. Now, if that doesn't go hand in hand on what they're doing, then, then I, if you don't see that, then then you're a bigger moron than, than, than Biden. Yeah, and you know, you got Letitia James now going after that company, I believe it's called DuckGo. For the immigrants that are uh, in the town of Colorado. Oh, yeah, because they're not giving them filet mignon. They're only getting right. peanut butter and jelly. That's what I right. feed my granddaughter. Right. You know, that's what's going on now. Okay. It's probably just for, um, you know, uh, political FaceTime. Anyway. Yeah. So, Timmy, let me just, uh, let's move on to the next thing because we could yeah. talk about this all day sure. long because I think just uh, you and I are not uncommon. We are common in the fact that people are fed up. They're fed up with the government on the state. They're fed up with the government on the feds. They're fed up with the counties, the cities, the towns, because most of us in New York state are run by the same breed of people, right? Yeah. The left, left. I'm a Democrat. I like to think I'm a middle of the road Democrat and I can think about things. And my job is to help families, help struggling mothers, help people who don't have no food, help them get on their feet, not to give them a state job so they can eat the rest of their life on welfare. Right. But so that they can have a, a time where they can, you know, take care of their family while they try to build their lives, go to college, do something right. These left people just think, hey, if we just wipe out the middle class because they're the pains in the ass and we just have the higher class and the lower class, everybody will have to bow down to us. And that's what I feel like the world's going to. Right. But, you know, again, we'll do a podcast, Timmy, on some of the state level stuff uh, uh, in the near future. But, you know, I just want to talk about one more thing, which is another sign of the city of Cahos, Right. So, as you know, the community center for many, many years tried to stay afloat with a little bit of money with a mission that didn't let them charge a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You know, they were 501c3. Uh, and they stuck around a long time because I started going when I was five. I met, oh, some yeah. of the, Me too. I, I met some of the greatest people who shaped my life. Uh, Mr. Gully, John Domel, uh, Joe Lutz, uh, and, and the list goes on and on. I met some of my best friends there. And, and I sat on the board there and I watched the struggles and, and it was heartbreaking. But then when I was the mayor of the city, uh, I was able to work with a gentleman who uh, was really interested in the community center. And uh, I, I, I helped him. You got him. a deal. Yeah. 
I helped him. We put the deal together. The city was going to contribute some money to the business, but not for free, right? He was going to run right. recreational programs for us so that we had right. programs for kids, free swimming lessons, use of the gym, basketball clinics, a whole bunch of things that the city didn't have the resources to do because we, we have a recreational budget, for, but for the most part, it's almost non-existent for programs. It was really existing for salaries and they didn't really have no programs because there was no other people. So we, we struggled with recreation. Now I give Danny McCoy from Albany County, who was a good friend of mine. And I was the chairman of ledge, you know, he understood the importance of recreation. So he helped build some recreational programs in the County. And he was gracious enough to say, I'll bring all of those throughout the County and Cohoes will be one of those cities. So we had karate, we had, you know, we had flag football, we had all kinds of programs when I was in office, but they were directly related to the uh, generosity of Danny McCoy and the county, right? The community center would have been the greatest thing that we could have ever done when it sold to Gateway and for 50,000 a year, our kids could have went there for free, swimming lessons for free, recreational programs for, for free. free. We were looking at moving the library over there so that the seniors and people that want to use the library could go there for free, a one-stop shop for our community, for our kids, for our seniors. And the other thing was the community center was a 501c3 as well. So they didn't pay the sewer and water bills. So between the 50 grand that I want to give, not for a gift to nobody, but because I wanted recreation programs for our kids and our seniors, and I could get it for a pretty cheap price compared to what other cities are paying. Some cities pay a hundred thousand a year and more just for the recreation director. Well, we were going to have to keep their pools open. In we were city. right. We were going to we have had a, an indoor pool. We were going to have a public private, public private mm -hmm. um, joint effort to bring recreation in a building that's been a staple for all of these years, 50 years. And, the man who bought it bought into my my belief. He said, you know, without having to pay the water and sewer and having the money that you're going to give for your programs and then we will run the programs for you is a win-win for everybody. And I was excited because we would have still had the county programs, the karate, and we would have had, you know, the wiffle ball and we would have had the basketball teams and we would have had driver education. I had a plan for all of these things and, and the library and one building and it would have just been fantastic. So the guy comes in and he buys it under those premises. And then unfortunately I left office and Keeler refused to give him that mm -hmm. same deal. Yeah, he killed And I, I talked to Randy Kanifka, who you know is my arch enemy, but I still talked to him because you know he sat on that board and Billy Smith as well. And I said, what, why is this guy closing? How can he be closing up so quickly? I said, you know, he gets 50,000 from us, water and sewage. He says, oh, no, no, that we, we never got that passed. So this mm -hmm. guy is investing almost a half a million dollars with a, with a handshake, which is what I still do in this world, shake hands. And, yeah. and uh, Keeler, unfortunately, gave him the quick. Right, after he pledged uh, after publicly he, in the newspaper to work to keep them open 24-7. You know, yeah. this is what Keeler did, and it's another failed promise by Keeler. Okay? Yeah. The guy just doesn't give it. he doesn't give a crap about the city of Cahos, really. Yeah, and so it's unfortunately. all show. Yeah. So unfortunately, a, a, a letter went out. We lose in out. the center, yeah. We're yeah, a letter went out, and Gateway's got to close as of the 31st of this month. Now, I know there's a lot of political bullshit going on. Oh, we're looking at the county. The county's not going to buy that building. No. I don't, I, 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 if I had a hundred dollars, I'd bet you a hundred dollars that they wouldn't, if they did, it'd be a hundred dollars worth losing, but I don't see the County buying it. Listen, government is not going to just reach in and buy a building that doesn't have success that a private company couldn't do. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they don't have the same um, mission as the city. We could have done it because we had the mission. We had the the, the programs, we had the, the, the library. We were going to save money by moving the library out of that big building and move it to the, to the yeah. center. And we, <laughs> and we didn't have to spend a whole lot of money to do it. Uh, we'll talk about the library in the next show because that's a whole other debacle. It's, right? it's a disaster. It's, it's, it's a disaster and it's, it's a stupid a move and it's just one of many. They want to sell the library that currently right now, okay, that needs 2 to $3 million in repairs. Who's going who's gonna to fix it?
Well, they couldn't, get, they couldn't get anybody to come for the $10 million for, for right. free money, right? Right, but, for free. So, yeah. you know, so we're looking, we're in a world of trouble, okay, financially. I can't see how we don't face a tax increase this year, okay? Um, it, 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 everything's going south under, under the current administration. Yeah. Well, one of the things that government's good at, Timmy, is trying to hide things. So what they do is they take their rainy day fund yeah. and they spend it down till they have shit left and they don't raise no taxes. And then one day you get hit with a 10 percent and you have no money when you get a water break because politically you use that money to to give yourself a political uh, pat on the back. Zero percent tax increase. Yeah, you went to your uh, retirement fund and you spent every penny of it. And then when it's time to retire, you got no money. That's what yeah. the city's doing. The city's going to be in a big mess. It may not be right now. It may not be in the years killers there because sometimes these things take a little time to catch up, yeah. but it will be a direct reflection of the last uh, four years and the next four years to come if things don't change. Well, and, look at uh, that. Right. Look at, I had a, the solar LED lights. Okay. Uh, this is the second one that failed on the same pole in less than six months. They, we reported one that failed and sure enough, the new replacement one, it's out there in the pole dying again. Yeah, well, and we're going right, and we're going to own them all, again, okay, labor wise. And about another eighteen months, we'll be paying to have those yeah. things. You ain't seen nothing yet. That's a so, disaster. So and I told them that. Be, yep. And when I was in charge, and they wanted me to do that, I said absolutely not. The yep. city, of, that's a luxury if you can afford to do it. Yeah. It's not a necessity, and that six million dollars could have went to a lot uh, more important things in our city. But hey, I just want to say yep. to the. Uh, to the people that bought the gateway, thank you for taking a shot at Cohoes. I apologize that you got blindsided and politically uh, beat up, but uh, you know you gave it your best shot uh, under the premise of of the city working with you. The city didn't work with you, so um, I understand you have to, in a business sense, uh, do what's uh, best for you in the business. But uh, it's a sad day to see another. A uh, staple of our city um, going, going under down. the under yep. the tubes. But uh, yep. hey, Timmy, it was good to see you. Yeah, and podcast, uh, uh, number 23. We podcast should have it up for the Saturday, you think, 23. Right? I, 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 it should be up relatively soon. Uh, and um, again, for the people that the word uh, out. Uh, enjoy it, please uh, subscribe. And uh, sure. Timmy, I'm sure we'll be talking really soon. And uh, I'll talk to you next week when we do the next podcast. So everybody, okay. Sean Morris from Truth, Lies, and Political Bullshit. And this is Tim with the Fifth Ward. And I want to add, look at we're always looking for guest speakers. If you want to come on the podcast, just give us a quick call or send us a message. And if you got a story to tell, uh, let us know and we'll get it on out there. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. Okay, Timmy, I'll talk to you soon, buddy. Okay. Bye now. Take care.